The Patriots started 2023 at just 1-5. and five. They did win last week and proved to 2-5. and five. Bill Belichick's 300th win, who supposedly signed a big contract extension this offseason, but this is far from what we're expecting and used to from Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots. Obviously, a lot of that could be attributed to Tom Brady as well, but Tom Brady had nothing to do with having a top 10 defense pretty much every year of the Bill Belichick era, right? And he was a defensive coordinator with the Giants, won a Super Bowl in 86 in 1990. He's one of the best coaches of all time. Defensive guy and the offense in New England is struggling. But can we turn them from a struggle bus into the powerhouse that they were before? We're going to try that in this rebuild. Turn the Patriots back into a dynasty. And I'm not going to put it all on Mac Jones. The offensive structure is not really conducive to success for a quarterback. So it goes beyond Mac Jones, right? But I think it does kind of go without saying you are limited with a player like Mac. He's just not somebody that can improvise. He's not somebody that has that dynamic element that you look for for a quarterback in 2023. And he's not somebody that even has elite skills outside of mobility. He's someone who needs to thrive on being accurate and on time. And that has been a struggle all in all. Mac Jones cannot be the guy for me. And we are probably going to look to move on, whether that's trading him for whatever I can get back or just letting him go. He cannot be our quarterback if we're going to build a dynasty. The offensive line looks pretty good. I like Trent Brown, Mike Onwenu, Cole Strange, David Andrews, City So is a young player from Eastern Michigan. Couldn't remember exactly where. I knew it was Michigan, but could not remember exactly. Uh, decent young player. So you'd like to think the offensive line is going to be in a pretty good spot going forward. Not a whole lot of weapons to work with on offense. Mike Kosicki, Hunter Henry, I mean, they're fine. Kendrick Bourne probably can't be wide receiver one. And it's not even just that. It's like Demario Douglas could end up being something. He's a really good athlete. Juju's a nice complement to a really good offense. Devontae Parker can't be in that wide receiver one conversation. Certainly not Jalen Rager. And then defensively, you have talent. When Matthew Judon's healthy. He's a disruptive player. Same thing with Josh Uche. Very, very talented. I don't know why Jelani Tavai would be on the edge here. Because Uche and Judon would both be pass rushers in the 3-4. Tavai is not a pass rusher. Mac Wilson, Juwan Bentley, there are some decent players in here, just not enough. In the secondary, a healthy Christian Gonzalez, Gonzo, going to be one of the better corners in the league. I feel really, really confident about that. Marcus Jones is a really good return man. On the defensive line, like Christian Barmore can be a good pass rush interior defensive lineman. But there just needs to be more firepower here. Marte Mapu could end up moving to linebacker for me. That's your role ideally for him is like this hybrid money backer. Think like kind of like Kyle Duggar. Not the same exact player, but similar skill sets. We can't have all three of these guys playing strong safety in Jabril Peppers, Giants, and New Jersey legend Kyle Duggar. Things are going to have to move around. Adrian Phillips, hook him horns. Let's make a couple trades, hit the reset button on this team a little bit, and see where that leaves us. Now, looking at the guys with expiring contracts... Trent Brown, I want to keep around. Kyle Duggar at 27 will be 28. Of course, it's usually how that works. He's just not going to develop much anymore. And I like Kyle Duggar. When he was coming out of the draft, not too long ago now, at a Lenore Ryan, I actually managed to get my hands on the all 22 of Lenore Ryan, which is difficult to get, but because Kyle Duggar was a big time small school prospect, I was able to. He was an awesome return man. And he's such a great athlete. And I feel like just because he is a hybrid safety, like linebacker playing for a not so great Patriots team, Kyle Duggar doesn't get the love that he deserves, but he's a really, really fun player and a great athlete. And I want to keep him around. I just don't know if it's going to make sense to, because he's never really going to be at an 85 or 86 overall for me, just with the way development works. And if he's only going to get worse, it's tough to keep him around. Mike on Wenu, we're going to go ahead and resign. Hunter Henry, I don't really care. Same thing with Kendrick Bourne. Like a lot of these players are guys that I don't think are going to get much better, but they're fine, but they're staples of the team right now, but it's also not a great team. I think I'm just going to end up trading a lot of these guys, try to get some value back for them and just see what we're left with after that. The first trade is a doozy. It is Kyle Duggar, Kendrick Bourne, Jelani Tavai, and a third round pick for a first from the Falcons. Hopefully they don't end up being very good this year, but that's trading a lot of players that I don't really want that are going to help the Falcons out right now. 
but for us, doesn't really do a whole lot. Also, JC Jackson back in New England now. What a move that was. Become an awesome corner in the heavy man scheme of the Patriots. Go to the Chargers, just be awful, and then just head back to the Patriots for a late round swap after being a huge contract in free agency. What a bizarre story, but it's not surprising. We've literally seen it happen before with Trent Brown and probably others too that I'm not even thinking about. Trading Hunter Henry, Devontae Parker, and the Green Goblin, Jalen Mills, to the Saints. We're getting a second round pick this year and a third round pick next year. I'm going to move Barte Mapu to free safety for right now. Really fun player to Sac State at a good senior bowl. And uh, should end up being a pretty good NFL player. Or at least somebody that can stay on a, a roster, which is, you know, a difficult thing to do. Keon White, super freak athlete out of Georgia Tech. 24-year-old rookie, though. We'll see if we can develop him. It's going, to, it's going to be a little bit difficult, and I don't know how much we should play him this year. I might just say, hey, we're going to be bad anyway. Just start him over Dietrich Wise, which, all right, I guess he's like, he could be a 3-4 defensive end. I just think he's going to work best in a 4-3. If you watched him play, he's a twitched up great athlete. But, you know, I wonder if that's well reflected in the game. Halftime is brought to you by the sponsor of today's video, Underdog Fantasy. You can use code BANGLE to get a deposit match up to $500. So whatever you deposit up to $500 for your first time, you'll get a deposit match of whatever that number is. And this is my set of picks for Sunday's games. We have Josh Downs higher, 44 and a half receiving yards. He's been on a roll lately. Who could have seen that coming? Yes, obviously I'm a big Josh Downs guy. Has had a great series of weeks and I think that will continue against the Saints pretty good matchup for him I have him going higher 44 and a half receiving yards Kenny Pickett higher passing yard to 216 and a half he's been over in each of his last two didn't do it against Houston and Kenny Pickett like I don't really believe in him but he's going up against a really bad pass defense in the Jaguars and he's been over in each of his last two I think it could happen again David Njoku higher against Seattle they're very bad against tight ends and Njoku's back healthy Hopefully his face is pretty healed, had nine targets for 54 yards receiving last week. He's a really, really good player. I think he could definitely go higher. Matchup's very good for him. Jalen Hurts' line is just too low here. He's gone higher in each of his last three. It's at 251 and a half. Again, he's been higher against the Jets, against the Rams, against the Dolphins, and the Commanders might be his easiest matchup yet. I think he goes higher again. And then Brian Robinson Jr. against Philadelphia. He's been lower in each of his last three, and this is the best run defense in the league, maybe right up there with the 49ers. So I think he goes lower, 39 and a half rushing yards. Let's hope he continues this putrid stretch as the commanders continue to throw the football for bad results. Those are my picks. Use code Bengal on Underdog Fantasy. You get a deposit match up to $500 on your first deposit. Now, Keon White was an inside-outside player at Georgia Tech. I'm going to play him as our second rush D tackle. I'm not saying it's a bad fit as a 3-4 a three, defensive end. I'm just saying he's capable of coming off the edge as well. So, it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see what his future has. I think we're going to use him in training camp, try to develop him a little bit. And uh, season one, it's kind of just going to be a wash. It's all about development here. And uh, we'll see what happens. We've got to re-sign some players, of course. But I'm going to do some training camp. And I'll probably meet you at the midseason mark. I take it all back. Mac Jones is a target-passing monster. I'm never getting rid of him. Look how big Christian Gonzalez looks, by the way, compared to whoever's in the slot. Or is 81 just Kendrick Bourne? He's not that small of a guy, right? It's got to be Demario Douglas or something. He looks incredibly tiny. It looks like a giant against whoever 81 is. I thought, no, Kendrick Bourne is 84. 81's got to be Demario Douglas, right? It has to be. This guy's so tiny. And I traded Kendrick Bourne, right? So I, I, I think I forgot in the moment. No blitzing. I only intercepted the ball with Marte Mapu. It's an easy gold anyway, but can you imagine if it wasn't and that didn't count? Would have been incredibly frustrating. Although I will say, if you can get a really short receiver in the slot, that's you facing these drills. It is incredibly easy against a little guy to do really, really well. Potential big development. Christian Barmore had a training camp standout storyline, and not only did he get plus five block shed, he actually completed his week one goal as we hold the Eagles to just 10 points in a week one win. He also gets 10,000 XP 
And I think another development challenge here in a minute, where if he gets three plus combined sacks and tackles for loss against this next team, Miami Dolphins, well, he would probably get up to superstar development. Maybe even a ton of XP as well, although that is highly unlikely. It's just three TFLs slash sacks, tough. And I don't think it's going to happen. I didn't set my scouts either. That is going to be a minor issue. And uh, Christian Barmore did not get upgraded, but a good start nonetheless. That XP is huge. If we end up moving to a 4-3, which I think we probably will, he'll be a bit of a better fit for me. And I think we're going to be in business. Ooh. Number one player in the class, Elias Colon from Boise State. 6'5", 225 with A medium accuracy. We could have some interesting players in this class, including a tight end projected to go top five. First time I've seen a quarterback named Jamarcus since the 2007 draft. That didn't work out so well for the Raiders. We are only two and five at the midseason mark, unfortunately. And our focus position... I've mentioned this before, I would really never do QB here because there's so few that you're actually going to consider drafting. It doesn't really make sense to learn a ton about, you know, three quarterbacks when you can do that individually. If you want more positions, more players to scout. So even though you might get an efficiency boost, let's say it lined up with QB, I would just still never choose that. Uh, we'll probably go with defensive end here. Even though it's apparently a weak class for left end, doesn't say anything about right end. And there also could still be one good left end, even if it's a weak class. So I, I would still just recommend doing whatever you want. And the efficiency boost, definitely nice. But obviously, ideally, you want to get those lined up if you can. The players ready to negotiate here are Michael Onwenu, who wants to be back. Mike Kosicki wants to be back. Josh Uche, who does not. Trent Brown, who's in the middle. If I re-sign Zeke Elliott, I'll I'll end the rebuild. I don't I don't need to do that. There's no way. But on when who's a big one, because he's at right tackle now. This guy just played all over the Patriots offensive line. Been very versatile and good for them. We could play him at guard, but because he's a tackle, he's going to be extremely expensive. I'd like a six year deal to bring him back, maybe even seven. Lock him up for his career, make him a Patriot. And Michael Onwenu is back. Mike Kosicki, I'm interested maybe for two years. He's someone I could see being a starting tight end for us. But maybe not someone I want to be here long term. And especially if that tight end looks borderline generational, I might not be able to help myself. I might go after him. As Josh, Josh Uche is currently projected to be fourth on the depth chart and left outside linebacker. What do you mean? No, you're not. I just, I don't believe that. So we're going to change some things around, make sure he knows that he's welcome. And then Trent Brown, thinking a four-year deal. Right now, we're apparently a playoff contender. That's wrong. So we want to sign him as soon as possible before he wises up to the fact that we might suck. Yeah, I don't know why Josh Uche would think he'd be third or fourth on the depth chart. We're going to move him over to right outside linebacker, where he's going to be the highest overall right outside linebacker on the entire team and hopefully re-sign quite easily next week. I don't know why he thinks he'd be so low on the depth chart. It's just simply not the case. Is it because he's not the highest rated outside linebacker competing with Matthew Judon? I do not get what's going on with Josh Uche. I guess I'm just going to have to like sign him for more than I want to. It's still not very expensive though, especially considering Josh Uche could end up being very, very good. He's only 24 years old, 78 overall. We might need a little help to get him there, maybe getting up to superstar dev or something like that. But getting him for under 10 million a year is pretty insane value. So obviously want to go ahead and do that. Going to go to week 11, choose my three focus players I want to know more about. I'm thinking QB. I'm thinking potentially just any of the top players in the draft. We have a lot of holes on this team that need to be filled. Pause, but actually not because it, there's nothing there. But eh, there's a little bit there. But quarterback is going to be at the top of the list. This tackle looks like he'd be really good. This corner looks like he could be great. The fact that he has A zone coverage with B man coverage and is a man-to-man -man archetype is pretty interesting to me. But I, I do really need to know more about these quarterbacks. George Atkinson from Oregon State, Jamarcus Greenfield from U of H, and Elias Cologne from Boise State. 
I'd like to get the true talent on those three guys, but the only way to do that, because when you do the focus players, it adds 40%, I would have to add them again in the last week before the draft. So I don't know if I want to do that. We're going to have a pretty good idea about some of these defensive ends, but I don't know, man. It's a tough call. I'd like for one of those quarterbacks to really jump out at me, but right now they're not really jumping out. Wow, did not make the playoffs emphatically. 3-13. and 13. Really, really bad. Mac Jones, 18 touchdowns to 17 picks on 3,600 yards passing, rushing. Ezekiel Elliott actually had a blast for the pass type year. He was incredible, given what the expectations are. And in Madden, low overall running backs do not perform. Now, why is Zeke playing over Ramondre Stevenson? It's a great question. Ramondre only had 19 carries. Why is Ty Montgomery playing over him is another great question. Now, to answer the first question, it's because Zeke was higher on the depth chart. I thought I'd change it, but I guess I forgot to. But it's okay. It's a losing season anyway. Although we lost a big year of development, I suppose. So maybe that ends up hurting us. No receiver really produced. Juju was okay. I mean, Rager was surprisingly good, but nobody even that close to 1,000 yards. And then Juwan Bentley had 140 tackles. Marte Mapu had 127. 20 TFLs for Barmore. More than one a game. Same thing for Judon, who had eight and a half sacks, which led the way. Very interesting season all the way across the board. Now, I wish I didn't have Zeke as our starting running back. I think the reason I, I didn't end up changing that is I thought I was going to trade him and then I ended up not. He was great, but I mean, I wanted to develop Ramondre Stevenson. Big miss for me. Big miss. Wow, what a Super Bowl. Jags 49ers, 31-28. T-Law gets his first Super Bowl win, Super Bowl MVP. Rasheed Rice wins Offensive Rookie and Offensive Player of the Year as Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs seemingly dominate, but don't make it to the Super Bowl. Probably beat by the Jags at some point, you'd expect, because the Chiefs are so good in simulation. They had a great year, but you know what? The mighty Jaguars came knocking on the door and then busted it down and... I mean, cruise to a Super Bowl win. I mean, 31-28 is not cruising to a win per se, but I mean, you know what I mean? Through the playoffs, just like getting all the way through it. Have to expect that they didn't get a first round bye because of those Chiefs or any of the other powerhouses of the AFC. And we'll see what this offseason has in store for us. So Uche has been re-signed. Mac Jones, we can either pick up his fifth year option or decline it, which... I'm probably going to decline it and look to trade him this year. Although, it's not terribly expensive. So we are going to pick it up. And the reason that I'm doing so is in case I don't find QB1 of the future this draft, we at least have a backup option in Mac Jones for this season and next season. Zeke's going to walk. I know. I, I can't believe that was handled. I'm sorry. <laughs> We'll look to uh, hopefully correct that mistake here going forward. So 60 mil potentially to spend in free agency. Probably not going to spend nearly that much. We want to be responsible with our money. Super important to do that. And there's not much here anyway. Devin White would really be the only player I have a ton of interest in, and he doesn't really even want to be here. And the players that have interest in us, well, I'm not really interested in most of these guys. Cesar Ruiz, maybe. I think I'm going to offer Cesar Ruiz because he just gives us a ton of flexibility. He's a guy that played center at Michigan. He's played guard in the NFL. And he's starting to develop nicely. He was a back end of the first round pick by the Saints uh, quite a few years ago now. Probably, what, five? So it would make sense with him being in free agency if the Saints picked up his fifth year option. And if they didn't, maybe he was a rookie four years ago. Either way, he would give us flexibility either as a starting center post David Andrews or right now a starting right guard over City So, who is a good player, but not as good as Cesar Ruiz right now. Makes more sense to start him. And David Andrews is someone that's regressing. How long can we count on him? Not much longer, probably. So uh, Sal or So can, can start at right guard after, right? And then we would have... Uh, you know, are a perfect slide in at right guard right now or, or moving him to center in Cesar Ruiz. So he gives us flexibility, but the Raiders are also going after him. It's a Richard Seymour type battle. 
And even with the Titans in there, maybe Albert Hainsworth. He was definitely a Titan, definitely a Patriot. Was Albert Hainsworth a Raider? Maybe briefly. As we bring in Cesar Ruiz, big pickup. Hainsworth was not a Raider. Was, of course, a Titan, a Patriot, a Buck, and also played in Washington for a couple of years, 09 and 2010, of course. That's obvious, but I thought, I thought after them, he might have gone to the Raiders after the Patriots somewhere in there, but no, never was a Patriot, or never was a Raider, was a Patriot. <laughs> so we are to the end of the offseason, pretty much. All that is left is the draft, and a lot of these quarterbacks, we know a lot about them, but not quite enough. I think I'm probably out on Cooper Sitton, but Adkisson, Jamarcus Greenfield, Field, and Elias Cologne, I, I just need to know their true talent. I think that's going to be big for me in my decision about how this draft goes. Now, there are some other players that obviously look quite good. Jeff Griggs ascended into the top five. Apparently, he's a top three prospect, and he looks the part. Elite everything. We know this is an offense that really loves to heavily feature the tight end. He looks phenomenal. And the last time the Patriots took a tight end out of Florida, this one UCF, not quite uh, Gainesville, but not too far away. Worked out pretty well. Aaron Hernandez had a killer rookie season. And yeah, I don't know what happened to him after that. We should look into that. Uh, Gronk obviously performed a just dynamic duo as well. And this center looks amazing too. Travis Pryor. Just A, everything. It's going to be tough to get all the players I want. Our pick is going to be very high. We should be able to get the pick of whatever quarterback we want. But it's the second player that could be a little bit more difficult to kind of key in on who we're actually going to take. All right, so the three quarterbacks are selected. We will have their true talent. So hopefully at least one of those guys is top five. I'm sure he's going to have normal development because my life sucks. But we'll at least know how good they are. We have the third pick. They expect us to take Jeff Griggs. I'm down for it. If that's going to be a generational type tight end, I'm down. We would just need to get two top 10 picks potentially, as our next pick is not until 27. That's courtesy of the Falcons who simulate extremely well. So we would have a long way to go, but also our first round pick next year is probably going to be tremendously valuable. So... We could definitely look to move that. NFL draft time. Picking at number three. The question now is, well, we're probably going to trade up in the draft, but the question is, for who? And Elias Cologne's around one talent. Jamarcus Greenfield round one to two. George Adkisson round three to four. So if there's a quarterback to draft, it's Elias Cologne from Boise State. Probably. His elite throw power, not much of a mover. Tom Brady? Not like he had a killer arm. Tom Brady did end up having a pretty good arm. Maybe not so early in his career, but I don't know if he worked on his throwing mechanics. I'm sure he did, obviously. The guy's a freak with being at the top of his game and eating unbelievably healthy, doing everything it takes. Tom Brady was one of those guys that seems like he got to be a better athlete the older he got, which is obviously pretty rare, but that seemed to be the case. Tom Brady was able to make deep throws. I mean, Go watch him with Randy Moss in 2007. It threw 50 plus touchdowns for a reason. It's not because he has a noodle, right? Now, Jamarcus Greenfield also has elite throw power. And what makes this interesting is that even though he's a slightly lower overall, and we know that because of the round one talent, he has just as good a chance to have a good development trait. And because Elias Cologne, we know guaranteed is not a top five talent, it might make sense to not trade up for Cologne and take Jamarcus Greenfield. I mean, he's pretty much just as accurate, right? It's very close. Cologne maybe a little bit more uh, down the field. Greenfield a little bit more short range. But does he have a higher ceiling because of his scrambling ability? These are interesting questions. Jeff Griggs, I kind of just want to draft. I just do. I, it shouldn't really be that much of a shock. I wish I knew a bit more about him, but I feel like he's going to be amazing. So if we came out with a quarterback and then a big tight end for him to throw to, that'd be a pretty good return in the draft. And I'm going to roll the dice. Greenfield is not expected to go until pick number 19 to the Vikings. There goes Cologne as expected. 
at two to the Rams. I'm okay with passing on the higher overall player because it means I don't have to trade up as much. And I'm going to take Jeff Griggs here. 6'6", 260, 21 years old at UCF. Pretty awesome player notes, except for it needs to work on simple concentration drops. But everything else seems great. No issues climbing the ladder to make catches. Excels at creating yards after the catch. So, exceptional body control on the sidelines. And the fact that he is so big at 6'6", 260 with a deep route running, elite acceleration and speed, great strength, we might be dealing with a potentially generational type tight end. Welcome to the team, Jeff Griggs. 88 speed, 91 acceleration. Even if he doesn't have superstar, superstar X factor, if we make him the focal point of our offense, he can end up being a generational type player. And I know we just signed Mike Kosicki, but I made it a two year, uh, two year deal for a reason, right? We're not committed to him. We can run two tight end sets anyway. And again, this saves us by not having to trade up all the way in the top 10 twice. Now, a bad way of looking at it that I don't suggest you do is saying, did you just prioritize drafting a tight end in the top five over a quarterback? And yeah, you could look at it that way, but I'm trying to maximize what we were doing in the draft as Jamarcus Greenfield goes at number 11. I'm quitting. It's over. Why would the Titans draft him, dude? Oh, you annoy me. All right, so I took a break and I played Counter-Strike 2 with my buddies on stream for a while. Twitch.tv slash Bengal had to escape away from this nightmare. Yes, I understand how uh, things did not go to plan. We're going to move all the way back down to 27. And yeah, I just point blank period, plain and simple, did not expect the Titans to take a quarterback at that spot. I wasn't going to wait till 19. I was going to wait till about 15. And that was a mistake, obviously. We know that now. And now we pivot as maybe Ray Darius Rudd. We don't need offensive line, but he, he looks like he could be okay. I don't know. We'll try to pivot and, and figure out some way to salvage this. And maybe it's with a safety. Thomas Keyes from Colorado. He's got great hit power, good man coverage, good tackle, good zone coverage. Not really a great athlete. I don't know where he would play for us. I'm trading out of this pick. The, who do I want? I mean, the Vikings are offering me a first and a second round pick next year to move out of this first. I'll do that pretty easily. And I just hope that that's going to be, I mean, even if it's not higher than 27, we still get a second round pick next year to do it as well. It, we botched the draft a little bit. I drafted a tight end and he, let me tell you, he better be the dis disgusting. He better be the sickest tight end I've ever seen. Otherwise... It's going to look quite bad. If he ends up being an absolute monster, I'm going to be able to live with it. But other than that, it's going to be frustrating to miss out on what could be a very good quarterback. Jalen Hayden's interesting. 21 years old, 6'3", 231, but is a deep threat. Pretty decent athleticism. Route running's not terrible. I'm going to take Jalen Hayden here out of UCLA. Only has normal dev, unfortunately, but the athletic ratings are good. And for a 6'3", 231-pound receiver, that's huge. We might have something here. The normal dev is a bit unfortunate, but if he has a great season as a rookie, he's going to go up to uh, star development pretty much guaranteed. So I'm really not too worried about that. But I might double dip on receiver here if Emmett Boss is available. And Emmett Boss is right here, actually. So that could be the move. And I think it's going to be, in fact. Out of Oklahoma State, if he's a good athlete, we'll see. Physical archetype, good speed, elite jumping, good strength. Great spectacular catch. Route running could be worse. It's not the worst thing ever. We're going to draft the 6'5", 220-pound receiver out of Oak State. He has hidden dev and is even faster than the receiver we just drafted. Although 10 pounds less and 2 inches taller. And 6'5", 220 is pretty big. But I just want to get it across how big 6'3", 230 is. That's a unit, obviously. You guys know that. Not a bad player. And we've really revamped the offense here. We're giving weapons to Mac Jones, our franchise quarterback. Oh, God. My voice is cracking because my dreams are cracking, crumbling away. Gil Gay? We don't need cornerback, unfortunately. I'd love for the Bucks to be bad next year. Getting a third round pick next year for 2024 fourth. And we are trading back again. I think I'll just probably have the CPU take some shots down the board. We got we went full offense, but no quarterback. 
Hopefully the QB class is better next year. I'm talking about a top five type of player. And we missed out on a round one to two talent, which I'm upset about. It's probably like a 73 or 74 overall, which is still good for a rookie quarterback. I feel like a lot of people don't recognize that, but this tight end is unbelievable. He is a 79 overall. It's one of the highest overall tight ends I've seen the entire year. 88 speed, 91 acceleration is not new information. He's a great route runner. 78 short route running is extremely high for a rookie tight end. He's got every trait, aggressive possession, and run after catch. Medium route running is high at 73. Deep route running is high at 68. I know it doesn't seem high, but that's very high for a tight end. Blocking, it's not really his game. I'm going to be honest with you. But he seems unbelievable. He's already in the top 7% of tight ends in the league, and he's yet to play a single snap. He's going to be unbelievable. Jalen Hayden's a 72. Emmett Boss is a 73, and the rest... I, Najee Bobo? I can't really think that these guys are going to factor in too much. Let's see uh, the quarterbacks we missed out on. As the center was generational. Pretty much for a center. He's an 83 overall. It's got to be one of the highest overalls I've seen for a rookie this year. On the offensive line, for sure. Now, he's a first-round guy for a reason. And... I still don't think offensive linemen can get superstar X factors. So I would say that's as generational as you can get pretty much for center. Although we have seen linemen with superstar X factor. They had to have won an award and got upgraded. That's kind of the only thing I can think about. And I think we did quite well. I mean, DJ Williams is 79. Kyrie Malone's a 79 as well. Now, here's where the problem lies. Is Elias Colon's a 77. Does only have normal dev... But that is a really high overall for rookie quarterback. I would not have been upset about drafting him. Normal dev is something you can really live with at QB. Even more so than wide receiver. And then Jamarcus Greenfield is a 74 with hidden development. He's got a cannon. The accuracy has a little bit of a ways to go. But overall, I would say he looks pretty awesome. 74 is good for a rookie quarterback. It really, really is. Especially in this game when you can only get upgraded. His dev trait is only star. I don't know why I look. It's usually only pain. But I guess we can kind of live with that. And what about the other uh, quarterback? George Adkisson is only a 71. Does have hidden dev though. Accuracy is great. Accuracy is really good. See, how is he only a 71? That's the kind of thing that just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. When he's extremely accurate. Deep accuracy is not amazing or anything. Only star dev as well. Did we dodge a bullet? Or did we screw up? Should we have taken one of those quarterbacks? You let me know down in the comment section below. All in all, not too upset about it. Could have been better. Could have been worse. But overall, I think we did a good job. Now that we saw the tight ends overall is a 79, it's incredible. Uh, I definitely would prefer him to the center. Just because the center is a higher overall doesn't mean it makes him better. It's all a case-by-case -case type of thing. And we're in another building year, so I'm not expecting huge things. But this could be a season where we trade Matt Jones. Or, to everyone's surprise, maybe we build around him. He's 25 years old, 77 overall, star dev quarterback. You can do worse than that. All right, first look at Griggs. How dominant is he going to be? Didn't get the separation I wanted off the line. That's a pat. What? How did he even get in position to make that play? The most dominant corner in NFL history. I think this is Gonzo wearing the single digit number too. <laughs> that was an insane first play. And he's, he's giving too much space. So it's like he can't really beat him off press. And his recovery speed is amazing. Like you can't beat him unless... Like, you let him lay into you and then pause. And I break back out for the touchdown. An ability slot here. This will be telling. We do get an ability slot on the Jeff Griggs upgrade to an 80. So he is, at the very least, superstar development. At the absolute very least, we've drafted a superstar in the top five. And Marte Mapu actually has superstar development. Jesse got it at Super Bowl week and I didn't notice. Okay, well... Marte Mapu's certainly worth building around now. I'll tell you that for free. I don't know what he's going to do for us just yet. 
Going to try to upgrade him as a zone player so that we, he's a little bit more, you know, reliable at the back end if we want to stick him at safety. Could still potentially move him to linebacker as well, depending on what happens over the course of this thing. Matt Judon's going to have to get traded. Just is going to have to happen. He's 32 years old, superstar, X-Factor. He will have value. It's not going to be like insane value, but he's going to have some value. And he's just not a player we can build around up to this point. Uh, or at this point, I should say. So he's just going to have to go. Keon White, strong preseason. I'm tempted to give him the plus five block shed. Shoot. I'm going to go for it. The plus three to power and finesse move might have been nice. Would have been nice. Either way, right? I think we probably can't go wrong with a big upgrade. But I took the block shed to make him a better run defender. Does that sacrifice a little bit as a pass rusher? Sure. But his pass rushing is already fairly good. He's already into the 80s for power and finesse move. Or excuse me, for just power move. So... The block shit, I think, is going to go a little bit further. Could go either way. It just... I think the CPU is going to upgrade power moves regardless. So might as well take the block shed when I can get it. That was just kind of my thinking on that. Show me quarterback, please. Show me... So we have Dakota Bender at number one. Jared Allen. NFL legend. Two quarterbacks since the, the uh, top five. And wide receiver, corner, and right tackle are the strengths of the class no quarterback to be found but hopefully it you know these top two quarterbacks are quite good allen 511 227 from mizzou dakota bender 64 227 from nevada or nevada if you're a native i just can't bring myself to pronounce it that way i know it that's how it is according to the locals can't do it can't do it i haven't really mentioned taekwon thornton I could see a world where he ends up being a nice NFL player. He's just too fast to fail in a way. Like, there's always going to be a role for somebody fast. Like, John Brown, for example, had so much speed, never really ended up being a superstar receiver or anything like that. And, you know, Patriots fans will know him fairly well. Was a Bill for a while. Uh, played for a number of different teams. Cardinals is where he started his career. But was effective in different offenses because of how he was able to space the field because that speed backs everybody up, leaves the intermediate and underneath stuff open. So even if they're not producing as much as you might like per se, maybe they're not a good fantasy player, they can still have tremendous value to an offense in real life. And Tyquan Thornton, maybe he's never going to put up a thousand yards like you'd like him to do. But he might be able to space the field and let other things in the offense get open and function. So he could still end up being a good player. And... I guess we'll just do physical on Emmett Boss. He's a scheme fit already. He's up to a 75 overall. He's going to start. He's pretty much the best thing we have going right now at the wide receiver position. He's going to be wide receiver one for sure for me. Camp standout is going to be Keon White. We just got to arrange things in a good way. And then we'll get season two underway. Uh, Juju is going to slide down. Boss is going to slide up. And I want Hayden to play. Because, I, I, I don't know even why I do, because Demario Douglas is a higher overall. They're both normal dev. Hayden, in my mind, could win Offensive Rookie of the Year and get a dev trade upgrade. Briggs is going to play over Gesicki. We're just going to have the two tight ends. Uh, Max Borgie can play, or Borgie can play fullback. And then defensively, Keon White's going to start. Devon Godshaw, Christian Barmore. I will end up trading Matt Judon. Bobo is going to start at MLB 2. We have our edge rushers. It's going to probably be Barmore and White up the middle. We have insane depth at corner. I have to end up trading one of those guys probably. I mean, the, Jonathan Jones is not young. Neither is JC Jackson. Jack Jones and Marcus Jones both have star depth. So we have corners we can build around. We got to get some of the old out here. And then we'll see what happens. Uche Judon, who's going to get traded, as I mentioned. Yeah, it's, it's not a great team. But it's also not a terrible team. 20-14, to 14, we lose week one. I'm guessing Keon White probably didn't meet that game goal of two-plus tackles for loss. No, he actually did. Excuse me. So he might get 10,000 XP here, right? Is that what's going to happen here? And then he has the opportunity to earn, I believe, superstar development if he gets three TFL sacks, any combo, against the Bills. So we're 0-1, but we got a big win in the development of Keon White. 
who was always going to be a long developing player. We'll see what happens in real life. The potential is absolutely there. And again, might not ever be a player that produces a ton, similarly to Taekwon Thornton, just because, you know, at that five tech position, if that's what he's going to be playing, it's not always going to be a position that your job is to get sacks. Sacks are not a great indicator of overall talent. Like we got to understand that at this point, if we're football fans, it's really more about doing your job. And like a nose tackle, for example, their job is to get in the way, hold up blocks, let other guys come in. So they're never going to put up big time numbers. A nose tackle might have 30 or 40 tackles in a season and be dominant in some cases, right? So that's why I hate to sound like such a nerd here, but film is always going to be like the number one thing. You got to actually watch and know what you're watching in order to see who's good and who's not sometimes. And it's not always black and white. It's not this guy's good, this guy's bad. It's this guy's sometimes good. Sometimes he screws up. It's kind of one of those things. But most of you get that uh, if you're on this channel probably. I've kind of preached these things for a long time. And uh, not just my thinking. A lot of other smarter people than me have kind of helped me out along that path as well. It's, it's so easy when you're first getting into like like really getting into football more than just like being a fan watching the games when you're really getting into it uh, you're gonna make mistakes and uh it's important to just listen to the smart people and learn as you go is kind of my main point with that as we ramble on through week two and the buffalo bills and hopefully keon white gets the game challenge three is gonna be tough two is already basically impossible we lose again to go oh and two i'm not like, mad about losing at all. But yeah, Keon White did not end up getting the game goal. If we can go ahead and have a high draft pick again, capitalize on that draft pick, and then dominate in year three, I am more than happy with that result. So 0-2, not that mad about it. Also, a running back top two at this point is absurd. It did happen not too long ago. But, um, I mean, Adrian Peterson was, what, the seventh pick? When did Ricky go? Damn, I have a fascination with running backs. I always kind of thought of myself as a more defensively minded guy. But, I mean, I got three running back jerseys all behind me. <laughs> Maybe I'm, I'm just a casual offense lover. Although I bet this running back is phenomenal. Oh, and Jeff Griggs is Superstar X Factor, by the way. That is a pleasant surprise. It's not that surprising, I guess, but it's I just i am seeing this for the first time. So, it's a surprise in a way, at the very least. We thought he looked potentially generational, and now we find out, you know, he's at the very least a very, very, very good tight end prospect, and I'm hoping to end up dominating for us. I don't really care if he wins Rookie of the Year or not. I'm not in a system that is going to force feed him the ball like Kansas City. I'm more focused on just the development of the team as a whole. Gonzo going to get a big upgrade point here. Plus two to zone coverage. I like that. Would love to get that into the 80s, make him a more well-rounded player. We're 0-3 to start. Again, I'm not really too upset about that. I'm really more focused about the long-term vision. Right now, we're building. Is Mac Jones QB1? It's an unfortunate reality for me right now. We're building the rest of the team up around him, and then we'll make a decision on that when the time comes. 0-6. Wow. Something's got to give here. Patriots, Texans, Nate Washington Bowl. I've been doing that recently. I don't know if it's like some type of tick, but it's, <laughs> I can't stop myself. I see two teams matched up. I I basically have to play Immaculate Grid with it. And I, again, I'm, I'm going to do that video, I think, of playing every Immaculate Grid ever. Um, it's going to take so long. So that's kind of like the one pitfall here is I have to put aside like hopefully less than three or four hours to put out a video a lot of people are not going to watch. So that's <laughs> that's kind of a tough thing. But eventually, I will do that. But the problem is, the more I put it off, the more Immaculate Grids that come out. One every day, and the video gets longer and longer and longer and longer, which the people that love to fall asleep to my videos, hurtful a little bit, but also appreciative. Um, I appreciate it, but you might have a long video to potentially watch at some point. So, something to look out for at the very least. Interesting development. Javier Blackstock, Tevin Howard, and Glenn Randall. Three corners are all 
top five talents. Now, this is good news and bad news. Good news is we know where three top five guys are. The bad news is that only leaves two non-corners. One non-corner as a top five player. Cecil Dobbins looks great with elite speed, but uh, yeah, kind of brutal. We don't really need corner. The draft is chock full of amazing ones. And what does that leave for us? Jabril Peppers wants to resign. Christian Barmore is going to have to. Ramondre Stevenson. Matt Judon's got to be traded right now. Jonathan Jones as well. Maybe corner is going to be a bigger need, that, uh, need than I thought. David Andrews probably gets re-signed for at least a year or two. Yeah, it's time to time to trade. And it's week 11. Why did I not realize that that happened? Okay, well, the trade deadline has since passed. So, it uh, could be one-year tag-and-trade type deals. There's potential for that. But we missed our window because Judon is going to regress. What a mistake. I'm making way more mistakes than usual. Matt Judon's going to get franchise tagged. Probably a tag-and-trade spot. Jonathan Jones can sign a one-year deal. He wants it anyway. He's going to be back and probably traded. Jabril Peppers, I would do... Yeah, four-year deal is actually just fine. I was thinking about a three-year deal. Four is reasonable. But Christian Barmore, I want back long-term. He's going to be an answer at the position on the interior for us. I could see defensive tackle just being Keon White and Christian Barmore and then figuring out the rest. Two-year deal for Stevenson, ideally. He's fine. Not amazing, but fine. And then a two-year deal for David Andrews. He doesn't want to commit right now. You got the deal, dude. You want to be here? What's the issue? Godshaw is going to leave, though, which is fine. 5 and 12 at the midseason mark. Is video new to this? Never seen that before. All right. I like it a little bit if it wasn't so weird and laggy. Mac Jones has the franchise quarterback tag. I guess he is an 80 overall at 25. I mean, I just, I'd love to not have Mac Jones. Ramondre Stevenson was phenomenal, by the way. I need a big upgrade for him after that season. This was a great year. 4.7 per carry, 11 touchdowns, over 1,300 yards receiving. Emmett Boss, what a great rookie year. 1,100 yards and 8 touchdowns. Only star development, but that could be going up to superstar with that great rookie season. Boo-Boo uh, Boo -Boo Schuster, one touchdown on 880 yards. Jeff Griggs, 800 yards as a rookie. Superstar X-Factor that we might even work more into the offense in year two. 88 catches, though, is quite a lot. Jalen Hayden didn't do a whole lot. He's just probably never really going to get upgraded too much. And then defensively, Najee Bobo, over 100 tackles. He is normal dev, but is very fast. Tackle's okay. Block shed's low. Coverage isn't too bad. And he has great traits. Man coverage is a bit low, actually. All in all, not too bad. We got no pressure. Pretty much none. Not really a whole lot of turnover action going on either. I can see why we were so bad. But we're going to be better in year three. The pieces are coming together. It might not look like it right now. But we're starting to build something. Chiefs, Cowboys, Chiefs win 31 to 16. Jalen Hurts wins league MVP. No offensive or defensive rookie of the year for us. And that's okay. We could have won AFC defensive rookie of the year as I think the Lions did, right? Somebody on the Lions. That's obviously NFC. So we could still be in play for that. But no dev trait or no upgrade skill points there for any one of our higher overall rookies means that Probably didn't happen, or definitely did not happen. And we'll head to re-sign players. Judon's going to get franchise tagged. He's going to go down in overall. I screwed up. Plain and simple. I'm going to get less value back for him now, which is a bit unfortunate. But it is what it is. He's down to an 83. He doesn't want to be here. I still don't care. He wants to play for a new team next year. I still don't care. You're getting tagged. Cole Strange, fifth-year option, picked up. And then Godchuck can walk. David Andrews is probably just going to re-sign an identical offer, pretty much. He is back. And I think that's it. 
We have 32 mil in free agency, but that's really significantly more than it seems because we just franchise tagged Judon. We're going to be dipping uh, that contract and throwing it to somebody else. And I'm not going to draft a running back, that's for sure. But I am interested in these quarterbacks. Each one of them has their downfall. Allen's not great under pressure and is tiny at 5'11". Dakota Bender, medium accuracy is not great, but has a cannon and moves pretty well. I think Dakota Bender is going to end up being the one. Maybe Jared Allen. He's 23 with like, he's got a great arm. <sighs> Why is this going to end up being a tough decision for me? It, I mean, Dakota Bender is the better athlete. Better physical tools, but will probably have normal dev because he's going to be the highest rated quarterback, would be my guess. That's typically how these things go, just because they hate me. Like, oh, better prospect? He's going to be worse somehow. Two is here. Not going to do that. JOK makes sense if we move to a 4-3. Greg Newsom is a good option at corner, but it wouldn't make sense to sign one with the a draft class that's so rich at cornerback. Nick Chubb, I could potentially be talked into. JOK makes the most sense if we move to a 4-3 though, and I think I want to move to a 4-3 anyway, so I might as well do that now and see if we can bring a Wusu Koromoa to New England. And now, Jeremiah Wusu Koromoa has interest in being a New England Patriot, wants to win in New England. Anyone else want him? No. Nobody else does. And he's going to sign immediately and join the Patriots. Perfect fit. We need one more linebacker now to make this work. Matthew Judon's getting traded. I know I've screwed up in this rebuild already. It's 3.30 in the morning. Imagine when I started recording this. I'm not thinking straight. But what I do know... I'll figure it out. I'll figure out what I know in a minute. But... No, come back to me. Also, we pick number three and number four. So we are set up in this draft. I guess the Vikings were quite bad. So we have high picks everywhere. A lot of potential, a lot of possibilities. I mean, the offers for Judon are disgraceful. What a joke. Judon, Jones, a fourth and two fifths gets us Yates and a second from Chicago. So... Yates is going to play linebacker. I believe he's got just star dev, but he's 22 years old. 76 overall. So, like, a fine rookie, almost. But he's not a rookie. He's a second-year player now, I believe. That would, <laughs> That's the only thing that makes sense. We've had one draft. And he's a Georgia linebacker, so that's already a leg up. Roquan Smith, ever heard of him? There's, you know, there's quite a few. Um, Smile Munden. At Georgia right now, could be someone that ends up going fairly high. He'll be drafted for sure if he declares, but Nolan Yates, fast, tackles well, developable player, developable. JC Jackson's getting moved next. I'm probably going to end up drafting a corner. I, I, I can't say probably, I might. That's as much as I'm going to commit right now. JC Jackson, what do I need? I need an edge rusher. Need an edge rusher pretty bad. JC Jackson's not going to get me an edge rusher. Probably won't even help. But, oh, the offers are poor for J.C. Jackson. That makes sense. J.C. Jackson, Boo Boo Schuster, Mike Kosicki, and a fourth next year gets us a second from the Texans. Yeah, it's... We're not getting a lot back, but we kind of are. Because we're trading, maybe I'd even say shedding, dead weight. And in return, we are creating space and opportunity it's a fun way of looking at it we need a receiver badly juju was never going to be the guy and we need an edge so bad priority number one find a superstar type edge rusher maybe it's in the draft you know what elijah moore is here in free agency and he has not been offered kind of a no-brainer to at least offer elijah moore he's a good player elijah moore gets a lot of hate he didn't produce at all in uh, New York with the Jets, aka New Jersey, and hasn't had a huge opportunity to yet with the Browns at all. I mean, the quarterback play there has been horrendous. 
Panthers trying to get in on the sweepstakes now. They're going to win that sweepstakes. And we'll see if Elijah Moore ends up being a good player. I liked him as a prospect coming out of Ole Miss. He's like almost, almost a hybrid running back at receiver. He's got to get the ball in his hands. That's it. NFL draft time. I feel like we did well last year, but we also made some mistakes. These quarterbacks are not going to be as good as I want them to be. Or we could still get by. Dakota Bender, round one to two talent. That's going to be the guy. I know we have Mac Jones. Why am I so intent on drafting a QB? Do we need to? <sighs> Mac Jones, dude. Why? Why am I even considering? I don't know. Cordell McLeod looks good if we need to draft a receiver. He was a focus player for me. Got him up to 100%. Round one's good. Texans at one. Go with Cliff Smith from FSU. Chris Batten from Oklahoma goes at number two. And here we are at number three. We have pick at number three and number four. We should probably just take the quarterback now if we're going to do that. All right, Dakota Bender, we're going to take a quarterback. That's what it is. Normal dev, it's going to be heartbreaking, but I've been there before. Elite throw power, strength for some reason, change of direction, acceleration. He is good under pressure and on the run. The accuracy... He's he's throwing it sometimes. <laughs> That's what I got to say about it. He does have hidden depth, thankfully. 94 throw power. Already plus 9 to Mac Jones. Change of directions, elite, accelerations, insane. I'm hoping we have something with Dak Bender. Oh, no, I took another Dak, dude. Oh, no. Nah, Dak is another overhated player. He's not elite, but he's, he's way better than people give him credit for. He just has not... Uh, Typically rose to big moments of late. Won some huge games in college and at the start of his career, nobody cares about those because what have you done for me lately? I get it. But you can do a whole lot worse than Dak. And Johnny Clements, I think is who we're going to draft here. B-Block Shed, Tackle and Pursuit are going to be at least good. Athleticism is pretty good. A finesse moves. I think he's going to be good off the edge. And I hope I'm right. Hidden Dev's a good start. 83 speed's not incredible. Seems to be pretty well-rounded. 88 acceleration is fantastic. And I'm hoping that's going to be my edge rush duo. Johnny Clements and Josh Uche. Now, the corner down the board, we need to draft. No way around it. His name is Cecil Dobbins. He's only 5'10". Maybe he's being overlooked. Went to BYU. I'm going to the BYU-Texas game on Saturday. That'll be interesting. I'm a big Texas fan, as you guys know. Uh, and, I mean, Texas is heavily favored, and they're just probably not going to play up to that. Malik Murphy has to play backup quarterback. Maybe Arch Manning going to get in the game for the first time in his collegiate career. Would be cool to be live for that. But, yeah, that's neither here nor there at this time. But BYU, I don't know. Let's go into an unrelated tangent. My favorite. Anyway, top five talent. Ran 4-2 forward his pro day. Got elite speed. We got to figure out a way to draft him. Now, if we stay at the back of, or excuse me, at the top of the second round, will he be gone? It's a possibility and a possibility I'm not going to allow to happen. We have so many extra picks. I'm going to use that to my advantage. It's a 2025 second and third, a third in 2027, and a sixth in 2025 for a first round pick number 22 overall from the Jets in the division. I want them to be on hand when we take a dominant corner. I'm excited about it. <laughs> and he is available. Cecil Dobbins from BYU. Welcome to the Patriots. Hidden Dev, only 95 speed when he ran 424 at his pro day, 429 at the combine. 95 speed's fast, but I was thinking 97, 98 maybe, 99 even. He's good, uh, athletically, very athletic. Just not super elite. I was thinking about trading down, and maybe I will, but I could also take a couple of shots at receivers. Jamar Fowler is just not a great athlete. Catches the ball really well. Would fit in great in New England, I'm sure. Would fit in great. Actually... Let me find someone that would fit in better. Nathan Morgan from Yale. That didn't take long. 
He'd, he'd fit in better. But Cordell McLeod from Stanford has great key ratings. He's physically very good. Much like the receiver we already drafted last year, but we had good results from him. Let's add another. Hidden Dev, they look very similar, but pretty incredible athlete. 91 speed, 94 jumping, 88 change of direction, 92 agility, and 90 acceleration. Not bad. So I think we've added a wide receiver two into the mix now. Defensively, got an edge. We got our quarterback. What are we doing with Mac Jones? That's the big thing. Well, I just drafted his replacement. So Mac, not coming back. Got to go. I really like where the team is right now. I, I don't, I'm, you know, I'm going through. I'm like, who do we trade for? What do we do? I think maybe a big time wide receiver one could be like, the biggest thing I can think of. We have picks. We have great players. But we could be missing that big time difference maker at wide receiver. We had an opportunity to trade for Aquanu. I just don't really think that we need him. But getting a big time receiver like Chris Olave, that's something we need. Mac Jones, a second round pick for Chris Olave, a fourth in 2026 and a sixth right now. That trade's going to get done. Mac Jones headed to the Bayou in New Orleans. New quarterback coming in. Got a big target for him in Chris Olave. Another elite speed player with all pretty good ratings. At the very worst, it's another good corner to add to the mix. It's got hidden dev. Nice add, I guess. And Oregon, that's like 10th on the DBU list. Think about it. Think about it. Uh, Ifo Ekpre Olamu. Right? Did Yamador Lenore go to Oregon? Might have. Javon Holland, obviously. Others, surely. Christian Gonzalez, obviously. Yep. All right, two third round picks. What do we need here? Got a receiver. We're done at DB. DB is good. Could use a tight end, maybe. And it's like, well, you have one. A backup, dude. A backup. Tight end, two. Maybe one that can block a little bit. I don't think that's Manny Fry. Oh, BJ Black is actually somebody I targeted earlier. This could be our Juwan Bentley replacement. Has elite speed, A play rec tackle and pursuit. He is a run stopping archetype, so block shedding should be pretty good. Hidden Dev as well. I think that's going to be a great pickup for us. And he seems like a Patriots type player. He's a white. They, they love him. They love the crackers in New England. That's why they love clam chowder so much. That's a fun fact for you. Did you throw the crackers in the New England clam chowder? Man, <laughs> jokes are always funny when you explain them, I found. Should we bring another one into the fold? A trucking, a ball carrier vision, flat as the day is long. Max Bloomberg does have hidden dev, 92 speed, 92 acceleration. Not a bad RB2. Okay, interesting. I would say this went unbelievably well. Maybe one of my most well-balanced classes of all time. Dakota Bender is a 75. That's great. That's already great. He's the 30th ranked quarterback in the league. Accuracy is already good, but it's getting boosted, so it's tough to tell. Medium is not great, but a good athlete and, I mean, already a top 32 ranked QB. He is behind Mac Jones, but he's three years younger, and he hopefully will develop faster. Johnny Clements is only a 74. That's a little bit disappointing for somebody that I was banking on being a really good player, but does have good traits. Finesse moves is 78. That's decent. Block shit to 74. That's not bad. And he's going to go down to defensive end where hopefully he's a slightly higher overall. That's my hope. Now, he's, he still is probably going to be around that same overall, but hopefully give me a bump up to a 75. Yes. Cecil Dobbins is an 80. Great pick. One of the best players in the draft, without question. No doubt. Cordell McLeod, 75 overall. Ramon Finney, 76. 75 for BJ Black. 74 for Max Bloomberg. The CPU did not do a great job after that. I should have just done it myself. In the whole class, we got the highest overall player at an 80. The running back was a 79 overall. He didn't really look amazing, but he's a power back. He's only got 87 speed, but very strong and agile as well. 90 agility. Yeah, all in all, though, I think we crushed the draft. It was a really good class, especially at corner. We know that. We knew there was going to be 
you know, four top five corners. It was just about which other player is going to be the top five player in the entire draft. It's just, just full of corners and running backs to a pretty unbelievable level. But we got, a, you know, a bunch of first round caliber players. I think we crushed it. I really do. I mean, this is a big time offense. Demario Douglas is receiver four. We now have Chris Olave, McLeod, and Bethel Thompson. That's a throwback for some of you. Now, if you guys remember McLeod, Bethel Thompson, you got to relax. You're as much of a freak as I am, probably. Ramon Finney has decent tackling and zone coverage. He's going to go play safety for us. We have great depth at corner. We took another DB anyway. We needed safety help, you know, behind Jabril Peppers, behind Marte Mapu. Ramon Finney going to fit the bill. Let's get our first look at Bender wearing number 19. Oh, not, a, not a great QB number. Oh, when we whiff the targets to start. I'm trying to think of any number 19 quarterback. Just like period. And I am struggling. 19. <laughs> I really don't know. Nothing's jumping to mind. I'm, I'm sure there is one, right? Or more than that. I'm sure there are a few, but... Just no 19 is uh, popping in mind. And, you know, I probably want to play the rookie BJ Black as well. Jawan Bentley's got to go. I know another actual Patriot I'm trading away. He's 29 years old. He's just going to regress. He's in the process of actively regressing. If I could get, like, a big-time middle linebacker or even a running back. I mean, Ramondre Stevenson... It's just not developing at all. I mean, a big running back could really make this offense tick. Do I risk trading a first round pick in case we're bad? I might. Okay, Juwan Bentley at two this year and next year gets me Tremaine Edmonds. Big time upgrade at the middle linebacker position. And that way, we have a solid backup. BJ Black can still start. The team just got a whole lot better. All right, we're looking good. You guys know the team. I think McLeod is going to be wide receiver too. I'd like the opportunity for him to earn Offensive Rookie of the Year. The defense looks great. We're starting a lot of rookies, but that means good things for our future. Barmore and White up the middle. Uche Clements off the edge. We know about our linebackers. Marcus Jones can play in the slot. McLeod in the slot on the offensive side of the ball. I think we're looking good. Max Borgie doesn't need to play at all. Five and two at the midseason mark. This is great. Bills, Jets, right behind us at four and three. So we're not really in the clear yet. But this is a great, I would say, true first season for a lot of what our future team is going to be, including our rookie quarterback, Dakota. Mm, last name. What is his name? Dakota Fanning. No, that's not it. Dakota. Dakota. Nope. Dakota Bender. How do I forget a last name like Bender? But McLeod has superstar development. What a nice development. Route running could be better, but he's going to be wide receiver too ahead of Boss. Superstar dev just that much more important. And then defensively, Clement's only a star. Black, we don't know yet. Dobbins only star. And Finney, we don't know yet. But we're looking good. This is a great year number three, actual year number three. And I would say we're pretty much good to simulate to the midseason mark. I do want to check out first and, and make sure that... Ooh, Quan Waller at LSU. LSU receiver, guaranteed stud pretty much. LSU. But uh, I do want to make sure we just re-sign everybody that needs to be re-signed. And we're good to go. Ooh, Chris Olave. Marcus Jones. Jack Jones. Tyquan Thornton could walk. Signed a bunch of guys in free agency to fill out the team. Obviously going to pick up that fifth-year option on Christian Gonzalez. But Olave, big extension for him. He wants a better historic win percentage. We just don't have that right now. So we have to overpay Olave. And Marcus Jones, I like the depth. I like what he offers in terms of being a special teams player. Big-time return man. Want to bring him back. And again, I really like the depth. It's not expensive to bring back some of these lower rated corners jack jones should be accepting our next offer probably we'll wait to the offseason to do that i think this is going to be a playoff team we are cruising right now if we can finish with 11 or 12 wins this is going to be a huge year and we actually did even better than that 13 and 4 
Absolutely massive Fred Warner with six interceptions would be a huge year for a linebacker as Dakota Bender lit it up as a rookie. Over 4,000 yards passing comfortably, 32 touchdowns, just seven interceptions. Ramondre Stevenson still did enough. I want a running back upgrade. He looks great, but he's just, he's low overall, and I worry about that. Receiving, I mean, Jeff Griggs had that type of year, like that best tight end in the year in the league type of year. Over 100 catches, 1,200 yards, 12 touchdowns. That is an X-Factor type player. He is dominating. Emmett Boss had a good year, but only found the end zone once. Very similar numbers for Cordell McLeod, who seemingly stole all of them, with 12. Chris Olave was the fourth leading receiver on the team. Pretty absurd. He's probably going to go in the slot next season. But what a season for this offense. And then defensively, JOK with plenty of tackles, five for loss, 16 TFLs for Josh Uche, including 16 sacks, 16 for Barmore with eight and a half sacks, 12 for the rookie Johnny Clemens out of Mississippi State with eight and a half sacks, and then seven and a half sacks and eight TFLs for Keon White, five picks for Tremaine Edmonds. Our DBs did nothing. Our linebackers had seven picks to the DBs won. Madden Sim stats are something else. But we went 13 and 4. Not only did we make the playoffs, we had a first round bye. We're crushing it. It's always nice to get that first round bye until you get eliminated in the first game you play. So I'm a little bit worried about the Ravens. Not gonna lie. I feel like it's been a little while since I've rebuilt an AFC team. And just like you're afraid of the Cowboys in the NFC. You get afraid of the Ravens and the Chiefs in the AFC. In Madden Sim, they're just very, very good. The Ravens only went 10 and 7, but have a very good team and murder us in the playoffs. We had the number one defense, the number 10 offense, but they did not come to play in this division round of the playoffs as we lose 31 to 13 and head to an early offseason. Johnny Clements may have won Defensive Rookie of the Year. He's got Superstar now. He's got ability slots, and he did win Defensive Rookie of the Year. What a pickup in Johnny Clements. And he's going to be up to an 80 overall in a minute, which means he's going to get yet another ability slot. Do I just go completely into Run Stopper? I'm going to. I'm going to. His overall does not change, but he becomes better. Becomes more well-rounded. Block shedding, playing up into the 80s is not quite that high. They're going to get finesse moves anyway. He's going to have a big year number two. We're in a great spot. Dakota Bender has abilities and superstar dev. Did he have it or did he get it? He had it. He won Offensive Rookie of the Year because of course he did with that type of year. Already I feel better about playing him over Mac Jones, I'll tell you that. And probably want to upgrade Field General as he continues to rise into the 80s. It's already a better decision. I feel good about it. I feel great about it, actually. Mahomes wins MVP, Steelers win the Super Bowl, and we had Dakota Bender and Johnny Clements listed as Offensive and Defensive Rookie of the Year. So we've got a lot of momentum right now. I know we lost in the division, but we made a lot of progress with building the team. And who do we need to bring back? I think it's just one player, right, who declined and then some other guys to fill out the team, of course. I'll probably just extend them here. I can't imagine doing a whole lot in free agency. We have plenty of money to do so. Gonzo needs to pick up that fifth year option as well. Uh, Jack Jones. Yes, Jack Jones is who we need to pick up. I can't imagine him not re-signing here. And he doesn't. He Or he doesn't not re-sign. He re-signs. And you know, we might draft a tight end. I re-signed Coquift, But we need a good tight end too. We can find that uh, one that can block. I'll do that. Ooh, do we bring Joe Tooney? back to New England. Maybe. We don't necessarily need him, but if he wants to be here on a one-year deal to come back to New England and win a championship, who am I to deny him that opportunity? Quandre digs it up to Superstar X Factor? Hell yeah. I don't know how, but he... Because he got upgraded surely twice. Not only, he probably does not have Superstar Dev in the game. So he got upgraded to Superstar and then again to Superstar X-Factor. How is he doing that? I need to figure that out. Isaiah Likely is from Massachusetts. Let's bring him back to the state. That's our tight end too. And I think we're going to bring in Joe Tooney and Isaiah Likely. Likely. 
Got Likely, got Tooney. We are good to go. Ooh, Travis Graham looks about 60 years old. You're entering the draft at 22? He got full gray hair. Listen, male pattern baldness, that can hit anybody. You could be 19 years old and be bald. That's fine, whatever. This guy's got gray hair completely at 22. I mean, maybe you can say that's black with weird lighting. He looks, he looks 50. I don't know. I'm not going to dwell on it. Um, Jalen Carney, it's just a good name. But Quan Waller, 6'4", 221 out of LSU, could be the guy. I know receiver's not a huge need, but nothing is. We are a talented team right now. There's not really one thing that we need to go out and get. Except for former NFL head coach Dennis Green. That's the difference maker. Okay, so we don't pick until the 27th pick. I don't know why I thought we'd be higher. We only have our pick. How do I get Quan Waller? That seems to be quite a good player. Catching... I mean, uh, I mean, his route running is great. His catching is great. He's just not an insane athlete. Is he going to go at number one overall? It would be, I don't want to say psychotic, but bordering psychotic to move up to number one for a receiver you don't really need. Oh, Greg Craig. <laughs> How did I not notice that? Greg Craig? His name's Greg Craig? I can barely even say that. Greg Craig has a juke move. He could be unbelievable. Is there a way I can get both of those LSU players? Almost certainly not, but I want to. I'm interested. This center is also going to be pretty good. Uh, I mean, we're having fun, man. This is probably going into the final year. Let me go make a move up. Not for the receiver, though, because he's probably going to go at number one overall. He doesn't. Okay, I mean, I, number one's impossible to trade for. Number two is not easy, but easier. I just don't have enough. I don't have enough to be able to move up to number two either, but it's just going to have to be okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deal with it. Either way, as Quan Waller does indeed go at number two overall, he's going to be good. He's going to be good for sure. But next up, Maybe try to go get this running back because that's not insane either, right? No, it is. We, team need quarterback. That's funny. I don't think so. A first this year and next year moves me into the top six where I'm going to take a running back with the hope that he's generational. He's got a generational name, Greg Craig. It's insane, but he's a really good athlete. and He's got a juke move, which that really does mean a lot. Could be 99. 93 speed is fantastic. 94 agility, 90 change of direction and acceleration. It's really, really good. Is he going to be better than Ramondre Stevenson? That's obviously the hope. I doubt it. But if he's an 80, I mean, I might as well start him. So I'm just, I'm trying to take the chance. I'm trying to take the chance. Would it have been easier to trade for an already established running back? Eh, maybe. Could have been. Oh, don't you look like shit. Let's go back to New England from UMaine. It's Tyrell Rivers. I think Project Pat went to UMaine. Um, Pat Ricard of the Baltimore Ravens. Pretty sure about that, but not positive. And we didn't need to draft him. I don't know why I did, honestly. We don't need running back and he didn't look that good. So not my best move. Ooh, Greg Craig is an 81. I think we made the right move. He's got only 90 juke, which is great, by the way. But oftentimes with A juke, you can get the 99 juke archetype. And that's not Greg Craig, but I think he's good enough to start. He's an 81 overall. You're assuming, you know, a higher dev trait because of that. It's not necessarily true. He could just have star. And then Quan Waller is an 82. The highest overall player in the class. It's not incredibly shocking. He's got 99 spectacular catch. Yep. Only 89 speed, but the acceleration's really nice. Yeah, 99 spec catch is really boosting his overall. He's a good route runner as well. I mean, it would have been an awesome pickup for sure. Would have been stoked on that. But it didn't end up happening this time around. And that's okay. It would have cost way too much to move up. We tried it. Tried to be stupid. 
and they wouldn't let me. So I am going to start uh, Greg Craig <laughs> over Ramondre Stevenson. Oh man, the, the names Madden comes up with. In their auto generator, never cease to amaze me. Now, John Johns is crazy. We've seen that. We've seen William Williams. We've seen Slade Slade in Madden 24. But Greg Craig is one of my favorites. I'm going to be honest with you. You guys know the team. The only change I'm going to make is putting Chris Olave in the slot. I traded for a big time receiver. I need big time plays. And I know he's not really a slot guy. He's an outside deep threat. I think he's going to produce more in the slot here in this rebuild. I'll see you at the midseason mark. I'm looking for five or six wins. I'll take five wins. Very similar situation where we were last year as hopefully our dev trait is revealed to be star. Okay, well, that was always a distinct possibility, but we have a two-headed attack. We got thunder and we got lightning and we have a very good team. Five and two, that's a great record by week eight. Hopefully we can keep that up and not only make the playoffs, but actually make a playoff run. Ooh, what an awful second half. We limp into the playoffs at nine and eight. I would have been devastated had we missed the playoffs, but unfortunately we have to play in the wild card, which is never fun. Dakota Bender, I mean, regressed a little bit, right? Kind of weird. And our running game got worse with Greg Craig somehow. Ramondre is still putting up the same numbers he's always putting up, just fewer yards. Chris Olave was great in the slot. Jeff Griggs took a step back. I mean, everybody kind of took a step back. We weren't nearly as good as I wanted us to be. We did make the playoffs. All is not, you know, lost. Pressure went down. What's going on with this team? We had the number one defense in the league last year, got better, and dropped to 21st. Our offense, even worse, or even worse. And who's even going to be retiring? David Andrews, maybe? I have no idea. It is David Andrews. Like, who's the oldest player that's actually a decent overall on my team? Got plus 10 morale for all players, though. If we can carry that into the playoffs... We can make a run. We can end on a high note. We got to knock off the Bills. And uh, it's going to be a challenge to do so. Not off to a great start here. Down, it was 10-0. Now 10-3, 10-6. to We're trying to mount a comeback. Our offense is just not waking up. And our defense continues to allow points. We're going to be out of the playoffs. Of course, I'm going to do one more year. We just got dominated. Oh, disappointing. Chiefs end up beating the Commanders in the Super Bowl 28-25. Mahomes gets another MVP. Really just a disappointing season. We didn't do all that well in the regular season after a promising start. And then the playoffs obviously was an absolute disaster. I don't really know why that would be, but it was really bad. Greg Craig does go up to superstar development, by the way. Wins Offensive Rookie of the Year. I don't know how he did. His numbers weren't particularly impressive, but all right, not complaining. Who do we have to bring back here? Probably a lot. Jeff Griggs is a fifth-year option. Marte Mapu, it's going to be the entire 2023 draft class. As Marte Mapu's gone up to superstar X-Factor. Okay, well, he surely is going to want to resign. And he hasn't really developed all that much, but do want to bring him back. He's developed a little bit. Oh, plus 10, actually. You know what? probably about good Keon White has I mean developed a little bit plus 10 but that's pretty much all you can do if you start out at 23 or 24 years old Ramondre Stevenson is going to be good for like two years and I, I would say like I don't know we, we've done kind of the best we can it's almost six in the morning I gotta hurry this up Let's let's win a Super Bowl, man. The franchise tag Tooney, by the way. Not gonna let him go. David Andrews is here. Gotta bring back kicker and punter. Although, we probably could just look to re-sign uh David Andrews either in free agency or just go after a different interior offensive lineman. We have money. We'll sign City so just in case. Not really a lot for us in free agency. David Andrews is gonna get the offer. 
We can do worse than him, I guess. But we can definitely do a whole lot better. And David Andrews is back. NFL draft time. What do we need? I like receiver. It's got to keep developing these guys, but we're running out of time. Defensively, man, Marte Mapu still doesn't have a picture in the game. I know he doesn't look exactly like his player model, if you remember seeing that, which is basically Finney here. Yeah, I think it's the same exact one. Does not look exactly like that. I'll tell you that for free. But he doesn't have to look like himself to play well in the game. That's what we're rooting for. The team looks pretty great. Corner is amazing. Christian Gonzalez is now a 90. Safety is good. I mean, the corner is great. The defensive line looks pretty solid overall. Linebacker is great. Just offensively, I need these guys to play better. Cole Strange going to play some center for us. Sure. Fine. Fine. Or he won't, and it's David Andrews. I'll let the CPU handle the draft, kind of fill in the cracks. Didn't have a lot of our top picks anyway because we traded them to go all in last year, and that really didn't work. Still have some picks in the mid to late rounds, uh, but there really wasn't anybody that we could really draft that was going to help us for this current season. Backup quarterback, backup tight end, and uh, that's kind of all we really needed. We have good depth at a lot of different positions, and the class had some good players, including a 79 overall quarterback that went in the second round. He's a scrambler archetype with 90 speed and 96 throw power and great accuracy. One of the best quarterbacks I've seen in the draft, for sure. And I bet his development trait is going to be pretty good. Ooh, I thought it'd be at least superstar. Only star. Pretty typical, I guess, though. We do have a training camp standout. And that is BJ Black. Let's get play rec up. Starting at left outside linebacker, we could use a boost. Okay, 2027, we have not won a playoff game. It's over for the Patriots dynasty. I've done all I can. No, but this is the team. I feel good about it, but I felt good about the team before and they've let me down in an overwhelming fashion. Not only first round elims, but I mean, 9-8, and eight, playing in the wild card. What are we doing? We are above that. And we have a superstar player on the practice squad. Who are you? How did you get here? I'm assuming undrafted rookie free agent running back out of Colorado that happened to have superstar dev and end up on our practice squad? Okay, well, that would be cool for Falcons franchise. Useless to me here. So thanks, but no thanks. Five and two, but we've been here before. We also have a breakout development challenge for our rookie or second year quarterback now, excuse me, Dakota Bender. Let's see what this little Bender is capable of. If he can do those things on the screen, one or fewer interceptions at 400 scrimmage yards or four total touchdowns, his dev trait will go up to superstar X Factor. Will that happen? I mean, it's unlikely especially against the Cowboys, who are really, really good in sim. But we do win 34-28. to 28. I suppose it's possible. Please tell me he accounted for all of the touchdowns. And it seems like it must be nice having a quarterback like Dakota Bender who's able to put the team on his back like he has the past couple of games. Show me Superstar X-Factor. Yes! Dakota Bender to X-Factor. Does it do a whole lot for me right now? Not a ton. But it, he'll develop a little bit faster for this final stretch and hopefully push us into the playoffs with a ton of momentum. We're playing well. We have so much depth. I keep saying that because it's so true. Money has not been an issue at all. Can we please actually win in the playoffs? We're going to get there at this point. I have no doubt about that. We're starting out at what? Six and two. We just beat the Cowboys who are the Madden gods. We got to we got to make the playoffs. Show me show me 13 again. Okay, 11 and 6. We're into the playoffs and is David Andrews going to actually retire this time? This worked so well last time. Oh no, it's Trent Brown. Dakota Bender's like, "Hey, Trent Brown's going to retire." And then he's going to not and test free agency like David Andrews did. What a bizarre thing that was. Now that I think about it, but we're going to have a plus 10 morale boost. I got an idea. Here's an idea. What if it did something? How about that? How about it actually rallies the troops and we perform well enough to win? 
I have no idea when Jermarcus Downing got onto this team. But just another good corner. Oh, awful in man coverage. I should move him to safety. To, that, that, that's a task for another day. It is, I would say, so late, but it's so early. And why don't I just go to bed? Gotta record it now. Going to Austin. So, gotta do it now. I'll sleep when I'm dead. Dakota Bender, big time year. His best. What a bounce back. 4,700 yards, 35 touchdowns, just three interceptions. Greg Craig is starting to get it going a little bit. He's a 91 overall. Doesn't exactly play up to that, but he's fine, I guess. Emmett Boss dominated. Chris Olave was awesome. Cordell McLeod had a great season. Jeff Griggs wasn't amazing or anything, but very good for a tight end. He's up to a 96 overall at 24 years old. That is very nice. Defensively, well, Keon White put pressure on the QB. 12 and a half sacks. Led the way by a lot. I mean, a shocking amount of pressure in, and not in a good way. Not in a good way at all. But that's okay. Because we played well enough. We're a playoff team. Our defense was 27th. Uh, it's got to change. 89 overall. Now we're bringing a couple of X factors to the table. Last year, we didn't have as many. We got knocked out. This year, we have at least three. Dakota Bender, Briggs, Marte Mapu of all players, which I love. What a guy. And uh, hopefully we can win four games in a row. If we do that, we will have won the Super Bowl, which that'll be nice. And it's an awful start. We have home field advantage. It's 7-7. Seven seven. We take the lead 10-7. Our defense needs to step up. They were MIA in the regular season. I need it now more than ever. Down 21-16. We take the lead 24-21. Defense is stepping up and the offense extends our lead, but not enough. A minute and 24 seconds to play. Ticking even lower than that now. Come on. Stop Justin Herbert. Get to the quarterback. Throwing over the middle. We left it wide open. Touchdown, Campbell. Paris Campbell. Giants legend. Okay. Uh, I mean, this is not bad for us, though. The Chargers will take a one-point lead. All we need to do is get into field goal range. They have no timeouts. They can't ice us. Get into field goal range and we win the game. This is quite doable. This is quite doable. Sanders to return. Make a play. Make something happen. We got decent blocks, actually. Up the middle! No, there was a crease! All right, touchdown saved. But we don't need a touchdown. All we need is a field goal. They have plenty of X-Factors. Greg Craig out in space. That could be money. I didn't throw. I'm going to throw on the run. Get crazy. It's Griggs! Jeff Griggs drops it. Oh, my goodness. Are you kidding me? Oh, that's devastating. It's third and two, and I'm running the ball. It's not insane because it just worked. We're going to hurry up. 40 seconds remain. I could actually run the ball again, you know. I'd love for you to actually snap it. Running back wide open. Hit Greg Craig. We got a block. We're trying to juke out of bounds. And they blocked him to the sideline, which is bizarre when we need to get to the sideline to stop the clock. We are almost to field goal range. We actually might even be there. We've played this conservatively, but we've put ourselves in a, in a good spot. There goes Craig. He actually breaks a tackle. Takes a big hit. Probably don't want to do that. And we're going to run hurry up here and probably one, or run one final play. Here's a run. And I wanted to get it lined up. Didn't exactly happen. It shouldn't matter. We're going to kick the field goal. I can't actually see it. I'm so used to Young Way Koo kicking. I can actually see the arc. But this should be good. Kick up straight down the middle. I left two seconds on the clock. If the Chargers beat me in the final two seconds, they deserve to win. That's it. It was a chip shot. I didn't put a lot of emotion in that call. You're going to have to forgive me. But a squib should end it. Two seconds to play. We have to bleed two seconds off the clock. They're forced to return it. Here's the return. Tackle's made. We're moving on to the divisional. Moving on to the divisional. 
for the second time, but our first playoff win. Two more wins and we're in the Super Bowl. I like the attitude. Give us another morale boost. Yes, Trent Brown reinvigorates the team. I love it. Who do we have in the divisional? We are about to find out. It's the Baltimore Ravens. Okay, we're ready for them. We're ready for him. Cecil Dobbins going to go up into the 90s, maybe? Yes, he does. We get the zone upgrade, make him a little bit more well-rounded. I mean, he's 93-man coverage, playing up to 95 right now, an 80 zone. So, we need a boost. Beat the Ravens, please. 89 versus 89. At least three superstar X-Factors for the Ravens. We've got a couple of our own. Let's do it. Ooh, a snow game here in Foxborough, Massachusetts. That's like classic football, right? Like it. When I think football, I kind of just associate it with the AFC, like East and North for some reason. It just feels like like Steelers, Ravens, Patriots. Even though I'm not a fan of those teams, right? It just feels like football in the snow. It's the playoffs. I mean, throw the Colts in there. I'm more of an NFC guy as a Giants fan, but it's just impossible not to. For me, at least, to see, like, the Steelers, Patriots, Ravens, Colts, and kind of not think about playoff football. That's my first association as uh, we've extended our lead 27 to 17. Ravens go and make it very close. But whew, <laughs> we managed to beat them. All right. That's all I got. I'm, I got stun locked. Dakota Bender is going to be playing up to a 96 overall. Accuracy continues to improve. He's a true 91 overall. Yeah, he's looking pretty good. Greg Craig is up to a 92 overall, playing up to a 94. Very nice. Jeff Griggs with another boost up. We'll do blocking, might as well. He's playing up to a 99 overall. I mean, now is the right time. Jags Patriots. Unconventional. But we've seen it before. Okay. Let's see if we can knock off the Jaguars. They're another really good team in Madden Sim for some reason. And they've got talent. No question, right? But hopefully not enough to beat us. Jags are up by two scores early. We need to counteract that immediately. We're not doing a great job of it. It's 24 to 10 now into the second half. We need touchdowns. Please. Field goals are not going to cut it. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. We need a stop. And we're going to get one. We're going to take over on offense. It's a great ball as we find Boss. He's looking like a tight end out there. Jeez. We just hit the uh, tight end Griggs for a nice gain. Hopefully I cut that in there. And then Craig up the middle. Diving. Touchdown. Massive. As Greg Craig finds the end zone. Down by two. I need Chris Olave to win instantly. Please. It's a slant. Down by two. Or we just got the football back via punt. Three and out. Never a better time for one. We need to capitalize. We need to take advantage. And we need to chew the clock. That's all that we need to do. Well, we need to move the football as well, right? Need to move the ball down the field. But above all that, we need to chew the clock. Now nah, we still need to move the ball down the field. Now that that's the number one. Oh, that's a nice broken tackle from Greg Craig. Third and two. Running the football, and we get shut down. Okay. It's not great. It's a really important fourth and three. We still have our tight end, so our, our timeout. So even if we don't convert this, we don't necessarily lose right away. But the tight end is open. That's not even a concern right now. Jeff Griggs. Moves the chains. Scrambling. Go, Bender. Please. Bender taking off. Just duck out of bounds. We can stop the clock. That's fine. All right. We're going to call a timeout. We have burned the clock. Chewed it all the way down to just three seconds. Where, I mean, this field goal should be the easiest field goal we ever make. It's perfect clock management. 25-24. We are headed to the Super Bowl. The clutches kicker since Adam Vinatieri. Unbelievable. He's made two, like, 30-yard field goals. Trent Brown at the podium. Plus 15 morale. 
for all players. I would hate to be whoever we face in the Super Bowl, aka probably the Cowboys. Ooh, it's not. It is the 91 overall San Francisco 49ers. They're better than we are overall wise, which is a rarity as Trent Brown going to retire following this game one way or another. Do we want to go out on top or are we comfortable with where we are? As Dakota Bender wins QB of the year and MVP, most valuable player for Dakota Bender. And I mean, he could play up to at least the 97, I would guess. And that's what it's going to be. This is the team. I mean, I'm just going to say what they're playing up to. We have a 99 overall tight end. The offensive line looks solid enough. 97 overall quarterback and running back. Chris Olave is a 95. Defensively, how many different players do we have playing up to a 90 or, or higher? I mean, the entire defense is getting huge boosts. It's a plus five for Dobbins. The entire defensive line looks stacked, including a plus five for Clements up to 91. Uche is up to 91. Barmore, 92. I mean, Tremaine Edmonds is playing up to a 97. This is the time. There's never going to be a better time than right now to go out and win a Super Bowl. So we might be a true 90 overall, but we're playing up a lot more than that. This is a very close Super Bowl so far. Back and forth. We are up 21 to 10, though. Need to keep the Niners off the board. Extending it to 28 to 10 makes sense for us in winning this game. But it is now 28-23. And the son of 49ers running back legend Roger Craig. Greg Craig tries to beat that former team. And he can't get anywhere. We have the lead, though. A minute and 38 seconds. What is our path to victory here? I mean, a first down, obviously. I don't think we can just kneel it. I think it's going to be too close. But it might not even matter as Craig has the speed. Makes a man miss. Into the open field. That's it. Game over. The Patriots dynasty returns. Quarterback kneel time. As we're going to win the Super Bowl. 28-23. to 23. It's like 7 in the morning. Uh, I don't know how it took me this long to record this. I don't know how long this video is going to be. But I saved Bill Belichick's career. Yeah. Classic YouTube title in 2023. I am somewhat guilty of it myself. That's the game. It's corny. I get it. That's the game. Is that going to be this title? No, no, no. It's going to be, I rebuilt the Patriots. Or whatever. I'm losing my mind. I had to go do that. It's 28-23. Uh, that is your final. Patriots Dynasty returns. Dakota Bender is that Bender. He's that guy. Greg Craig, monster. Brought in a couple of real players as well. Tremaine Edmonds, Chris Olave. Who else? A lot of drafted players per usual. I like doing that. Jeremiah Usukoromoa via free agency. And that is pretty much it. A lot of rookies. That's the way you want to build a dynasty through the draft. It's cheaper. It's more sustainable if you can draft well. But that's easier said than done. And I've got to be done. It's late or early. Some of you wake up at this time. It is, yeah, almost 7 on a Friday. A lot of you are up right now. This is this is me. You, so you want to be a YouTuber, huh? I'm going to go sleep. Take it easy. Please subscribe to me so I can keep doing this. Thank you.